Trần kính chào quý vị. Trong mời quý vị xem tin tức mới nhất ở Mỹ đã có rất là nhiều tiếng súng tại cuộc vận động tranh cử ngày 13 tháng 7 tại bang Pennsylvania theo giờ Mỹ của cựu tổng thống Donald Trump. Sự việc xảy ra khi ông Trump bắt đầu bài phát biểu được khoảng 10 phút sau tiếng nổ, ông Trump đã ngã xuống đất. Các nhân viên mật vụ đã nhanh chóng đưa ông rời khỏi sân khấu. Quý vị có thể thấy rõ trên mặt và tay của ông Trump có vết máu. Cựu tổng thống được đưa lên xe SUV và sơ tán ra khỏi hiện trường. Theo báo cáo cho biết, cựu tổng thống vẫn ổn. Cựu tổng thống Trump cảm ơn cơ quan thực thi pháp luật và những mật vụ đã phản ứng rất nhanh. Ông ấy vẫn đang ổn và điều trị tại bệnh viện địa phương. Cơ quan điều tra đang tiến hành điều tra và sẽ công bố kết quả sau cuộc tranh luận thất bại của tổng thống Biden và cựu tổng thống Donald Trump thì rất nhiều người dân Mỹ kêu gọi ông tổng thống Biden từ bỏ tranh cử tổng thống nhưng ông Biden nhất quyết không từ bỏ tranh cử thật sự là một cuộc tranh cử tổng thống Mỹ quá gây cấn và nhiều bất ngờ Donald Trump at a Donald Trump rally in Pennsylvania it was Saturday afternoon American time uh... It appears that a bullet skimmed uh, Donald Trump, hit him just behind the ear or grazed his ear. There was blood across his ear. Uh, he ducked down. The Secret Service piled on top of him. Uh, we'll have a look at it in a second, exactly what happened. Uh, what we now know is that uh, the shooter was then killed uh, and an individual, sadly, tragically, a, a, a fan there at the... Um, Uh, watching the Trump uh, uh, Trump supporter uh, is reported to have been killed along with the reports that the shooter was killed. So we can't verify that, but those are the current reports. Uh, Donald Trump himself went to a uh, hospital nearby and has since uh, reported on social media that he is fine. As he was escorted from the stage by the uh, Secret Service, he continually pumped his fist in the air and uh, yelled out uh, defiantly, fight, fight. The crowd uh, were uh, shocked and uh, ducked for cover. This is all that's happened, we'll and uh, since then we've had reports from all around the world, uh, different people obviously offering their sympathy and uh, offering their theories on uh, where to from here. We'll keep you for the next, uh, for the rest of the day, but certainly here on Outsiders for the next hour, we'll, we'll be talking to more people about exactly what has happened. Let's just have a quick look now at the very moment of the assassination attempt on Donald Trump just over an hour ago. Look at what happened. Oh. Politics now. Nielsen reports some 25 million Americans tuned in to watch President Biden's high stakes press conference last night. Tonight, the president is back on the campaign trail in Michigan. Gabe Gutierrez is there. Tonight, President Biden in Battleground, Michigan, trying to turn the page after defending his fitness for office. Hopefully, with a little bit of age comes a little bit of wisdom. I promise you, uh, I am. Uh, I'm okay. The swing state crucial for his reelection. A new poll out today conducted before last night's press conference suggests the race is unchanged since the debate. Get behind this man like people are getting behind Trump. OK, and it, bottom line, still, the debate performance has some Democrats here rattled. Would you consider yourself a Biden supporter? Um, I was a Biden supporter right up until the debate. Uh, now I really would like to see an open convention. Deborah Lewis Langston said she'd now prefer to vote for Vice President Harris. Biden being 81 years old, no fault of his own. Things just don't work like they used to work. And I'm 71. I can tell you, they just don't. Please, please. At that high stakes press conference last night, the president drew praise for his command of foreign policy, but also criticism for this gap. Look, I wouldn't have picked Vice President Trump to be vice president, but I think she's not qualified to be president. So let's start there. After former President Trump quickly mocked his opponent, swapping Vice President Harris's name for his, President Biden shot back. By the way, yes, I know the difference. One's a prosecutor and the other's a felon. Today, two weeks after the New York Times editorial board urged President Biden to leave the race, it published another essay, this one calling former President Trump unfit to lead, writing Mr. Trump has shown a character unworthy of the responsibility of the presidency. He has demonstrated an utter lack of respect for the Constitution, the rule of law, and the American people. The former president meeting yesterday at Mar-a-Lago with Hungary's authoritarian prime minister Viktor Orban just days after Orban met with Vladimir Putin, a contrast with President Biden, who at the same time was meeting with other world leaders at the NATO summit. For President Biden, Michigan is essentially must win. His campaign now acknowledges that winning the blue wall, Michigan, Wisconsin, and Pennsylvania is the clearest path to victory in November. We can't afford to lose much support here. Dave Gutierrez in the campaign trail tonight. Thanks. Today, Democrats on Capitol Hill sought reassurance from the president, but as Ryan Nobles reports, the mood in Congress remains very much unsettled. New York Congressman Hakeem Jeffries, the leader of the Democrats in the House of Representatives, today informing his colleagues that he met with President Biden following last night's press conference and, quote, directly expressed the full breadth of insight, heartfelt perspectives and conclusions about the path forward. Jeffries did not say his caucus is all in on Biden as the party's nominee. Should we read into that? Well, I think it's self-evident right now with almost 20 members have come out saying, I think we need a different nominee, that the caucus is not united. Even more Democratic members have now called on Biden to end his campaign, despite his well-received press conference last night, including the ranking member on the powerful House Intelligence Committee, Jim Himes. I'm asking us to step away from the love and the loyalty and just say that the numbers suggest that we're going to lose. Defections from Biden growing, but as of yet, no mass exodus. Joe Biden is focused. 
on the future of this country. And I always say the best predictor of future performance is past behavior. Congressman James Clyburn of South Carolina telling the Today Show's Craig Melvin that he still believes in Biden, but said if need be, Vice President Kamala Harris is up to the job. Absolutely. No question about that. She has acquitted herself well in the job as vice president. The current situation, a sort of purgatory for Democrats on the Hill. One members worry cannot fester for much longer. I don't want to be biting my nails every time President Biden gets on stage. That's the dynamic at work. We need to be shifting the attention to the other guy. And Ryan, we have new reporting tonight that at least one House Democrat today told the president directly it was time to leave the race. That's right, Lester. Sources tell us that in a call with House Democrats, uh, Congressman Mike Levin of California confronted the president and said that the party needed new leadership. The president responded by promising to get out on the road and answer more tough questions as the campaign continues. The former president bleeding and rushed off the stage. We like watched him go down and hit the ground and everybody was screaming. A witness saying he saw the shooter on a roof. Seen, seen a guy on top of one of the buildings. Tonight, Trump is safe and out of the hospital, and the attack is being investigated as an attempted assassination. Good evening, I'm Jessica Moore. And I'm Maurice Dubois. Today's events are nothing short of historic, sending shockwaves throughout America. Here's what we know right now. Someone fired multiple shots during a campaign rally in Butler, Pennsylvania, just outside of Pittsburgh. Former President Trump saying tonight he was shot in the ear. We want to be clear, this has not yet been confirmed. The Secret Service says the shooter is dead. A rally attendee was also killed. Two others critically hurt. And we have learned President Biden has spoken with former President Trump. We have team coverage for you tonight, beginning with CBS 2's Lauren Linder in Butler. Take a look at what happened. Secret Service agents rushed former President Donald Trump off stage after shots were fired, moments after he began speaking at a Saturday evening rally in Butler County, Pennsylvania. The Secret Service says a man attending the rally was killed. A doctor standing nearby tried to help him, performing CPR. The guy had spun around and was jammed between the benches. He had a headshot here. Trump raised his fist as he left the stage. On his Truth Social site, the former president said he was shot by a bullet that pierced the upper part of his right ear. I knew immediately that something was wrong and that I heard a whizzing sound, shots, and immediately felt the bullet ripping through the skin, he wrote. Much bleeding took place, so I realized then what was happening. I just hear these four shots and everybody's screaming drop and you can see the blood like splatter on his face and the Secret Service just barricades him. The Secret Service says the gunman was outside the cordoned off area of the rally, standing on an elevated structure, and that he was shot and killed by a member of the agency's counter assault team. A large number of Secret Service agents is in Milwaukee right now ahead of the convention. They're trying to piece together what happened here in Butler. President Biden spoke a couple hours after the shooting. There's no place in America for this kind of violence. It's sick. It's sick. It's one of the reasons why we have to unite this country. We cannot allow for this to be happening. We cannot be like this. We cannot condone this. This was Trump's last rally ahead of next week's Republican convention in Milwaukee. He was taken away in a motorcade and again held up his fist as he got into his SUV. That was Lauren Linder reporting. A man in the crowd told one of our reporters in Pennsylvania that he saw the suspected shooter on top of a building. And that witness said he alerted police moments before the shots rang out. Trump started. We, I noticed two officers that were looking for something or somebody. I was So I was looking around myself and seeing a guy on top of one of the buildings go in between one building to the next and went and told the officer that he was up there. That witness said by the time he returned to his spot, the shooting had begun. He was not hurt. CBS News congressional correspondent Scott McFarland was on the ground in Butler when the shooting started. He joins us now from the rally location where it's nighttime there. And with what he saw and heard today, Scott, good evening to you. I heard you say earlier on the air tonight that you can't unhear it. You can't unsee it. Must have been an incredible s- sequence of events for you. Maurice, what a monumental, unequivocal failure of historic proportions that thousands of people came to what should have been the safest event in town. Secret Service protection, everybody went through a magnetometer. There were people with paramilitary gear. For this to happen at a place where people brought their kids, brought their families, is unthinkable. I was on the rafters right near the cameras when the gunshot started, and it sounded to many of us like firecrackers. Bullets in person don't always sound like they do in the movies. And when we hit the ground looking for cover, it was also unmistakable to me, Maurice, that a lot of the people in the crowd couldn't find cover. They were jammed in like a rock concert. Only some of them had chairs. And you could hear the screams of some of the people in the rally uh, distraught at what they were seeing. I think it helped stabilize people when the former president jumped up and pumped his fist triumphantly. But they evacuated the entirety of this rally within about 10 minutes. We're in a parking lot a few football fields away. All our stuff is behind as investigators launch what is going to be an unprecedented criminal investigation in America. And Scott, I wanted to ask you about the immediate aftermath of the shooting. We heard some hateful rhetoric sort of pointed at you and the other journalists there. What was that experience like? A small minority of the crowd um, started cursing at us, blaming the media, saying this is your fault for inciting this. Um, There were some bike rack barriers separating the media risers from the crowd. I think when Donald Trump jumped up triumphantly, it helped level some of that off. But I've been adding an anecdote throughout this night, Jessica, that a few of the folks who were taunting us, as often happens at Trump rallies early in the day, came to check on us. This was a (laughs) tragically unifying experience for everybody here. 
That it is. Okay, CBS News congressional correspondent Scott McFarland. Thanks, Scott. Take care of yourself. We really appreciate your reporting tonight. Donald thank Trump's you. children are reacting tonight on social media. Ivanka Trump posted on X, thank you for your love and prayers for my father and for the other victims of today's senseless violence. I continue to pray for our country. I love you, Dad, today and always. And the former president's son, Don Jr., sharing this photo with the caption, he'll never stop fighting to save America. Shocked and stunned are just some of the words used by the political establishment to describe the attack on former President Trump. CBS2 political reporter Marsha Kramer is here now with more on their reaction. Marsha. Well, Jessica and Maurice, Donald Trump may have moved to Florida, but he was born and raised here and built his business empire here. So he will always be a New Yorker to many. The horror of the events in Pennsylvania bringing local Republicans and Democrats together to decry the violence and pray for the former president. There's a lot of animosity in this campaign. New York Republican Party Chairman Ed Cox had only been in Milwaukee for a few hours, barely had time to get settled for his party's nominating convention when he got word about the attempt on Donald Trump's life, telling me it hit home in a very personal way. He is the son-in-law of Richard Nixon. It is something that is on the back of your mind, that this can always happen. I'm just looking at this photo. You can see the bullet whizzing out behind Trump's head. This was an assassination attempt, plain and simple. And American elections should be ter- determined by voters, not violence. Uh, and what we saw today is, is really just so horrific. Uh, and it, it saddens me for our country that this is where we are. Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer posting on X, quote, I am horrified by what happened at the Trump rally in Pennsylvania and relieved that former President Trump is safe. Political violence has no place in our country. Although the Biden campaign worked to take down political attack ads as quickly as possible, yeah. Congressman Lawler couldn't resist taking a shot at the Democrat campaign strategy. Some of the rhetoric that has been used uh, in, in the course of these political campaigns uh, does not help. Uh, when you tell people that the other side is destroying democracy, um, that does not help. Experts say the events of Pennsylvania will now play a part in the convention in Milwaukee. Well, it certainly is going to um, uh, color a lot of the events. I'm sure that we will see it being referenced by speakers throughout the convention. The attack is also expected to harden Mr. Trump's resolve to talk about safety and his claim that migrants should be deported. I do think that it will provide uh, a platform for uh, Mr. Trump uh, to kind of showcase um, a lot of uh, more of the things he wants to discuss on this campaign about uh, safety and, and, and crime. Now, officials tell me Mr. Trump intends to continue with his campaign plans, including the announcement of his running mate, Jessica Maurice. Marshall, do you think there's any reason to believe the GOP will change anything about its position on guns? Well, I asked Ed to tighten it even more because they're concerned that any event, pre-convention, post-convention, mm-hmm. could be a target. Real concerns. Yeah. All right, Marsha, thank you. All right, Mel, so many questions tonight about security at this rally there in Pennsylvania and how the shooting could happen, but also how law enforcement can prevent this from ever happening again. CBS News' Derek Waller joins us now in studio. And Derek, you spoke with some security experts about these very questions. Yeah, both these campaigns are really going to ask some hard questions now about what they're going to do uh, going forward and uh, take a closer look at their security protocols and rethink uh, whether they should even be having rallies outdoors. How did somebody get that close to the former president to be able to go ahead and by millimeters uh, almost kill him? Former FBI agent and security expert Manny Gomez was just as shocked as all of us, especially knowing what goes on behind the scenes. The Secret Service has a very strict protocol. They send an advanced team uh, well ahead of the rally. So certainly there's going to be a a major investigation as to uh, what happened. That investigation led by the FBI. They're going to bring in their crisis management team, their critical incident response group. A lot of FBI resources are heading to meet the agents from the Pittsburgh field office because they have to go about finding out who is this dead gunman? Where does he live? Uh, Get a search warrant for that residence. Get a search warrant for all his phones, electronics, accounts. Um, They've got to delve into him and figure out, is he acting alone? Expect to see heightened security going forward, like on election night 2008, when then-President-elect Obama addressed the nation from behind bulletproof glass. Is that something we're going to have to see going forward? Perhaps, but we got to keep in mind, in these these Trump rallies, it's 300 60 degrees. So you had people behind uh, former President Trump, people in front to his left, to his right. And the concern is of a copycat, somebody that's out there that sees this and says, wow, he got really close. Maybe I could get closer. And, you know, another idea is have the rallies indoors. Gomez says that is a safer alternative because the Secret Service has total control of who is in that space. But really, at the end of the day, guys, the decision on where to hold this event, that is really up to the candidate itself. Jessica Maurice. All right, Derek, thank you. Out of an abundance of caution, the NYPD says it is increasing security all across the city. And that includes a Trump Tower in Midtown. CBS 2's Alicia Reed. They're live right now. With supporters have been gathering outside. Alicia. Maurice and Jessica, from the moment word started circulating about that shooting in Pennsylvania, Trump supporters started gathering here at Trump Towers in Midtown Manhattan. And although the crowd has dissipated a bit since then, the level of security is still here. Donning the American flag or make America great again hats, Donald Trump supporters showed up to Trump Towers to lend their support after watching the assassination attempt play out on their TV screens. I heard the pop, 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 and I realized what happened, and I was just, I just started crying. I just couldn't believe it was happening. And I'm, I'm very hurt that someone could feel it's okay to treat a human being like this. Security on high alert, manning the building, police cruisers lining surrounding streets. In a statement, Mayor Eric Adams says, no matter our disagreements, we must all agree that violence of any kind is unacceptable. I immediately thought of, you know, other uh, assassinations of presidents like JFK and Abraham Lincoln, so... Uh, uh, some, this is huge. I don't know why people are doing these bad things, you know. If you don't like the guy, leave him alone. If you like the guy, show support. It's plain and simple. Whether from the area or visiting New York, supporters say this incident has strengthened their support for the former president. I'm with him all the way. We know it's coming from those people who want him to be dead, but 
the big guy there is with him. And he will always be with him because he's a good man. And he loves this country. And he wants the best for the American people. I just felt like I needed to be here to show. Even if President Trump doesn't know that I'm here, I just know I'm here for him. That's something new in this country. 13 of 45 U.S. presidents have been subjected to assassination attempts, according to the Congressional Research Service. Four presidents have been killed. At least seven of the nine uh, past presidents have been targets of assaults, attacks, or assassination attempts.